guys welcome back to river rock channel so today we're going to talk about a little bit of uh, the de-dollarization which is the ongoing process right now happening um, as you know the, the Russian and Ukraine situation got worse so um, it, recently I've been hearing there's a very famous economist and also a very good analyst his name is Dalton Bazaar He's the chief analyst and economist working for Credit Suisse, and he often has. I I I would call him, you know, that kind of analyst that doesn't just kind of read the book, you know, kind of mecha mechanically accepting everything from uh, the modern mon like monetary finances. He is few of the anal analysts and economists really view the world uh, from trading perspective and he really understand and uh, if you hear if you can just listen to his podcast um, I, I think a lot of uh, traders and a lot of investors serious where we're talking about very serious investors will learn a lot from his perspective and the reason why uh, is because Zoltan Poza even though he might make some kind of mistake but he has the courage to admit that and not only not only that but also he has this kind of uh, uh, chain he really see through the events he understand the events it's not linear fashion uh, the global events including all these political events it's these events are constantly evolving so it is very difficult to uh, you know to because the world doesn't really operate like a simple formula. You, you can see a lot of analysts, they are just, you know, um, viewing the world in a linear from linear fashion. And which is the reason why they cannot be good as analysts or economists. Uh, so anyway, Zoltan Pozar, he recently um, came out with a very interesting idea which he actually believes that we are uh, accepting or we are coming across to another phase of Bretton Woods which he referred as uh, Bretton Woods system the third uh, which is the the third phase of uh, Bretton Woods so he claimed that um, the dollar system will gradually shifting from from a, a credit based currency system to a commodity based system uh, and if in a future episode I will be you know explaining what would be the major difference between commodity based system and also credit based system but right now just keep that in mind that you know in a credit system in a credit you know uh, kind of financial society and you know in a, in a financial world money can be printed and money can be created and in it, it's Central banks have the supreme superiority because central banks are capable of creating currency, creating inflation, and also be able to control, manipulate the quantity price to a certain level. But uh, if we are going to a uh, commodity, I would say commodity-based credit system, that means we can only print money uh, it means we are going back to a gold back currency system and then uh, you have a lot of if you want to create currency that you need to have a physical back reserved you need to have a lot of precious metals to be the collateral so you can print and create those currency so uh, which is the major difference between a, a dollar based system and a future we were talking about a de-dollarization because so everything is uh, the same. We're talking about de-dollarization. We're also talking about how dollar will be less important, and how uh, Russia and China they're using their more currency. They're using their uh, very very powerful currency, which is commodity backed, and they're using their their edge, which you, we all know that Russia is one of the biggest. And largest economy system, and they are also one of the largest exporters, uh, exporter uh, in, in a financial 
market. Although uh, Russia may not have very advanced economy system and financial system, and it's you're you're not going to see very strong GDP out of uh, Russia. But anyway, uh, because Russia provides so much of uh, basic commodities, that makes Russia a very very tr important trading partner in a global uh, financial system. And also, if we take a look at China, China is also a very important trading partner. And we all know that China, uh, the whole world is shifting. Uh, its own factories to China because China be able to uh, produce all these cheap and pr produce all these commodities, uh, these merchandise for a very cheap price, and that is the very important foundation of that we, we we call this a globalization order. We call this the uh, you know the the ongoing dollar system because it's the dollar system was built on this uh, globalization and that's how a u.s economy is dominating the entire world is because um they in in a globalization kind of structure um u.s is shifting all these uh, manufacturing and all these uh, supply chain uh, all these manufacturers to these emerging countries such as china so they be able to bring down the cost, and also in the in a globalization system, uh, Russia is also the major, major, very important uh, materials and commodity provider, which is hence why you have all these very important supply chain. You have all these facilities that you be able to uh, shift and input all these commodities, and you know becoming all these. Uh, uh, you know, steels. We're talking about uh, merchandise. We're talking about all these uh, um, manufactured goods and shift it to all these um, developed economies. So the whole world will be able to enjoy a very low margin cost society, which is built on the you know, globalization system. But with right now, with uh, Russia and China cooperating together. That we we can assume that in the future, um, a U.S. is U.S. would have to face two opponents, two of the major opponents, rising against U.S. economy, therefore challenging the dollar system, the dollar dominating system. If a lot of people like I, I've been sharing this in my previous video, we're talking about how Japan, when Japan was. Uh, at his economy peak, Japan was selling all its exports and goods to the entire world. They'd be able to provide very cheap and very competitive and very high quality uh, goods and merchandise to the US and to all these uh, uh, developed countries, therefore creating wealth and all this prosperity. But then US uh, seeing the rise of Japan economy and also the U.S. based system is seeing that you know Japanese yen is seeking for more of superior position in the global financial system. Therefore, you have a plaza court. You have U.S. basically forcing Jap Jap Japanese yen to rise, and then therefore uh, lowering the U.S. dollar value and creating a positive trading plus, uh, trading surplus for. America, therefore, boosting U.S. economy system, therefore damaging Japan economy system, and in the same time, uh, you have Japanese bubble economy bubble soon booming and then burst. And what would be the price of Japan? That would be a twenty years of uh, economy um, economy depression. Right now, the situation is a little bit different because Japan. Uh, we all know that Japan was a major, major uh, criminal. We could, we could say that of of the World War Two. That's why Japan is having all its military power being uh, removed, basically because of U.S. And therefore, Japan is not, uh, from traditional perspective, is not a a big country. It's a big economy system, but it's not. 
a nation that's you know having all these uh, military power not strong enough to fight against us or any of the western ally but right now we're seeing and, and plus the fact that uh back then us and europe has a very solid uh cooperation and also a very strong foundation working together but right now uh so that's why japan was the only enemy for us back then but right now us is facing two major enemies both very big economy system and both have very strong military power and the, which is the reason why and also these two countries are the major trading partner of the entire global global economy system so that's why if china and russia is holding together and then us would have to bring on some kind of uh, i don't know swift sanction against china if that really happens that will only backfire of the dollar system because that means few people will be using dollar for transactions and we all know us is not going to provide all the oils that the entire world needs especially for the europe therefore europe would have to work with russia and work with china be able to you know supply with them with cheap energy and keep their industry to work and functioning so that's why when facing ukraine uh crisis the um i would say you, the u.s uh, politicians including biden are not very well thought of all these kind of sanction package because basically they did not see how this could backfire Amer americans most powerful weapon which is the dollar system and with that dollar system being challenged by china and russia and i think um posar sultan posar has a has a edge for what's coming which is Bretton woods the, th the third the third phase of Bretton woods system which lead us to a financial system that's accepting uh, different currency for facilitating all these commodities including renminbi and ru rubles the people would be forcing would be forced to use rubles and and chinese renminbi to pay for their commodities and uh, manufacture goods that means few of them will actually use dollar for settlement and that will also create another um, <clears throat> divergence out of the current system that means uh, we're shifting from a single polar system which means dollar is the strongest currency and every other currency is other you know minority shifting it from the other system which is the dollar is in decrease increasingly um not important and you have more use and more transactions out of the uh, different currency system and that is so-called de-dollarization which is a very simple concept but in the next video i will be explaining uh, in detail what what is the true meaning of de-dollarization and i hope you guys uh, enjoy the content and i if you like my content please share and subscribe and i'm a trader that's um, very interested in sharing my point of view with a lot of my subscribers so in this channel we share a lot